Welcome to Voodoo Whiskey Gaming, and today I'll be giving you my late review of Breach and Clear. So, Breach and Clear is a tactical simulation RPG. I guess that'd be the best way to really describe it. Breach and Clear has actually been out for about a year now on Steam. It just came out recently on the PlayStation Vita, so I figured why not review it? Here's where I'd normally talk about the story, but Breach and Clear literally has no story which in my mind makes it great for the PlayStation Vita because you can open it up, play it for a little while, and shut it down without having to worry about picking up where you left off, remembering where you were in the story, things like that. As for voice work, it's literally unimportant because the only things you actually hear said are things like target down, grenade out, and clear. So not a big deal in the overall of the game. As for the graphics, they're not super important. Your camera isn't right over your character's shoulder, so you don't need the best visuals. Nothing is super detailed and it doesn't really need to be. The graphics not being great didn't really affect me because I generally used the overhead camera angle so that I could see more of what was going on in each mission, more of the battlefield as it were. That having been said, you can tell that this was originally for a larger screen and that it was just ported over. I think they really could have done some work on the menus to make it better for the Vita to really optimize it for the platform, but they didn't. As for the gameplay and controls, the game is predominantly about, as the name implies, breaching and clearing. When you start out, you make a four-man squad and you choose which military group they're part of. There are seven in total, and they're based on real groups like the Navy SEALs, the Russian Spetsnaz, or the German KSK. And each of these military groups has their own statistical advantage over the others. Some are faster, some are more evasive, some are more accurate. You get the idea. Once you've made your squad, you start doing missions. There are three specific types of missions. The first being terrorist hunt, then there's bomb disposal, and then there's escape plan. Terrorist hunt, your goal is to clear all the rooms on the map, kill all the terrorists. It's that straightforward. Bomb defusal mode, you have to explore each map and find the bomb. And while you're defusing it, you have to protect the guys you're using to defuse it from the op four who are trying to stop you. And escape plan, where your squad members are scattered across the map and you need to get them to a specific exit. Personally, I found escape plan to be the hardest because your guys aren't together, they can't protect each other. So it's very easy for one of them to get killed and you're not going to do your best on that mission. There are five maps for each of the seven regions and you can play every single map on any of the five difficulties in any of the three game modes. So for me, that gives me a lot of replayability because you can just go back and replay it on a harder difficulty and in a different mode than the first time around. I mentioned that this game was an RPG earlier and here's where that part comes in. You can get four stars at the end of a mission you get XP as well as money when you complete any mission. One thing to know about the stars is they are linked to the difficulty on which you are completing the mission. So if you complete it on normal, you get a total of eight stars, four for easy difficulty and four for normal difficulty. Stars are important because the more stars you have in total, the more weapons you unlock. The XP just helps out each of your character's stats and money is obviously used to buy better guns, better gear, and attachments for your weapons. To get stars, XP, and money, obviously you have to beat missions, and to do that, you need to think tactically. In gameplay, everything happens in short increments, and in between those actual moments of movement, you're plotting where your characters will go and what direction they'll be shooting in. And based on other character choices, you may be able to have them sprint without shooting, or provide cover fire, suppress enemies, etc., etc. If you want to do well in this game, you do need to put some thought into it, where your characters are going to go, who they're going to shoot, etc, etc. I mean, you can just kind of point them and let them go, but that's not going to end well. When it comes to the controls, I feel like it's better on the PC, but I feel like it's more an error that occurred during porting the game over to the Vita than the PC just being a superior platform. The Vita controls do work, however. You can use the touch screen. I personally don't find it that useful. The thumbsticks work great for it. Going along with that, I do think it's better on the PC overall because it feels like this port was kind of lazily done and the game kind of freezes, but not completely freezes when you're playing it on the Vita, as well as I have had it completely freeze where I had to exit out and close down the game. And while that is annoying, 
it doesn't ruin the game because each mission only takes like five, maybe ten minutes to complete. So if it does freeze and you have to exit a mission or exit the game, you're really not losing that much. At the end of the day, I think this game is worth owning. If you have a Vita, it's great because it's fun to play on the road. If you have a PC, it's definitely worth owning on that. If you have a laptop or something where you can play it on the road through Steam, even better. Thanks for watching, and if you like the video, please hit that like button. And if you like what I'm doing in general, please subscribe. Have a good one.